it's not like we're going into a focus group and trying to find 300 people and having them do punch cards and then waiting three weeks to find out what people thought of the music. Because you can get instant baseline data on how somebody's going to respond to something they're hearing and that predictive ability is, is amazing. Because when you can find out really quickly and specifically, you know, how people are responding to what you're creating, that gives you a lot of power. Today, I'm pleased to welcome Scott Simonelli, founder and CEO of Veritonic to the Sound and Marketing Podcast. Scott has been a pioneer in online testing and optimization and has a unique perspective on this niche subject, as he is also a composer. At Optimost, he was instrumental in leading the company from inception into being acquired by Interwoven HP. He also led business development at Order Groove, working with brands such as Walmart, P&G, L'Oreal, and CVS. Before that, he held positions at Sony Music, Boozy and Hawks, and even taught elementary school music. You'll notice a lot of background in the audio, and that's because I caught him in the midst of Ad Week New York. And instead of trying to edit out all the street sounds of New York City, I decided it added to the ambiance of the discussion. So please enjoy part one, measuring the value of sound with Scott Simonelli in the streets of New York City. This is the Sound and Marketing Podcast. What would be your elevator pitch for Veritonic? What would you, how would you describe yourself in, you know, (laughs) in the time that it takes to get from uh, floor one to floor three? (laughs) (laughs) Right. Um, I mean, basically, you know, Veritonic is an audio effectiveness and measurement platform. Uh, That's, I can do that in maybe one floor. So there it is. (laughs) Um, And I I think, you know, the main application um, of our platform today is, is really two different uh, sides of the table using it. It's, it's audio platforms like, you know, Pandora or, or mid-roll or megaphone or you know, anybody who's in the audio business, um, from terrestrial radio to podcast to streaming, uh, helping, you know, ensure that they have great campaigns running on their platform. So they're, they're looking at the effectiveness of, of their advertising. Um, and then the other side of that equation for us is, is, is the brands themselves. So, you know, if I'm, you know, Pepsi or Visa or, you know, Indeed.com or others. It's like, you know, I want to come here and I, I, I have research platforms I use all across my brand. Um, I have brand guidelines. I have, you know, brand objectives. I have marketing objectives. You know, what's the audio piece of that puzzle for us? Who, what part of our, you know, technology stack and research stack do we use to, to understand how, you know, our consumers and all, you know, the people that we're advertising to and, and use our products, how are they responding to sounds? Uh, whether that's music, voice, or you know, functional sounds, which we do quite a bit of. So that's basically, but the, our platform is a technology platform that, that both of those uh, parties license. Can you tell me kind of a little bit about what led you to creating Veritonic? Uh, like, you know, me, the genesis for me was coming from, uh, you know, being a composer for, for TV ads and, and just a lot of writing a lot of ads. Um, and I just wanted to be right. <laughs> or just like, you know, to have the audience vote, um, you know, and, and that, that was what was frustrating. I think, you know, when, when you're getting this like singular decision that determines like what, what fits and what doesn't when, you know, the interpretation of the brief and the audience for the ad isn't present. Um, and so, you know, just a frustrating, and that's, that was really a genesis for starting Baratonic with that frustration, um, which is very math based. Um, but it's math based in the sense that it'd be great if somebody in this room had any idea how the audience feels about this. Um, and that, that would serve us all better. I think mean, you could write better music, you could make better decisions if the audience were there to, you know, kind of give their opinion. Yeah, that, that sounds so obvious. <laughs> but it, it, yeah, it, it, that's what I'm finding. Like, you know, as I, as I evolved from like music and all of that stuff, when I evolved into sound and like listening to what sound can do and then the whole world of marketing and sound it was just it was so surprising that the things that like you and I are discovering and talking about now why they're not more mainstream why people are not considering these things first it's just it's the the further i get into it the more like mind blowing it is to me that <laughs> that people are not on this yet yeah it's it's a it's a i mean it's a journey not a destination in that like you know it's it's people don't don't like to be wrong and they don't like to be judged just by nature. I don't think anybody does. So the other side of that coin that I just presented is, 
you know, what if the data says that everything I'm doing is garbage? And <laughs> um, that's something that's just an innate fear in everybody, right? So like the people tend to do things for, for the greater good, but they tend to also, you know, that's coupled with their desire, you know, to personally be successful or personally avoid harm. So like, you know, you don't want to bring in all this information or all this metrics or all this, this measurement, all these metrics and all this measurement. And then you're, you find out that you've, you've been doing a terrible job for 20 years or something like that. So that can, that can be scary. Um, and so this stuff kind of comes in very slowly um, until it kind of comes to a place where if you're not using it, you're not doing your job. And audio is not there yet, but the internet, you know, and e-commerce and just online activity in general, whether it's you know, media based or commerce based is, is far past that. Um, and, and so it was that, it was that window and kind of the first company that I was a part of uh, after leaving Sony, um, which is AB testing and multivariate testing on the internet. Um, you know, in 2001, starting that company, no, the, the people did not make decisions that way, you know, when, when building a website or building uh, a form or, or things like that. And today, like the web is a highly targeted and personalized experience. And it's able to do that through all that data. Uh, whereas, you know, audio is nowhere near that right now. You're still in the, what? Like, you know, like, <laughs> um, you know, what, what happens if I'm wrong? And no one, no one thinks that way about the internet today. Um, but they, they certainly still think that way about audio. I think the, you know, what led me to Veritonic was being at the, at the really odd crossroads of working for, uh, working for a multivariate and A-B testing company and also being a composer of, of music. And, and that's a, just an odd seat for somebody to be in, I think. And, and a lot of kind of founder stories or people who, who start businesses, you know, they usually come from some, you know, burning passion or desire, some, some inefficiency or need or pain point that, that, that somebody has. Um, and, and here was this thing where, um, you know, I'd grown up writing music my whole life. It's all I thought about, you know, I'm a composer and here I am working at Sony and now I'm writing music for ads. And it was somewhat a little disheartening because some of the stuff you're writing when you're doing advertising, like this is what I'm, <laughs> this is what I'm writing. Um, is, this, is, this, is this it? When I left Sony, I started, you know, at Optimus, just, you know, it was kind of on a whim and, and that business ended up being very successful. And, you know, I'd still, be writing on the nights and weekends and it, the, the real kind of moment where it came to a head was it was for a big you know national bank and I kind of looked at them they were paying you know quite a bit of money to use our, our AB and multivariate testing platform online and they were also putting music in a national spot making a completely subjective decision um, and I was like well, why <laughs> now, why are we not putting any any data behind this so you're, you're spending millions of dollars to test them Way your mortgage application form looks or the way your website looks and you would use uh you know music in an ad where you know millions of people are going to hear this ad and, and you're just doing it based on what, what you think and, and you're not in the target demographic for this ad or or you know someone who would use this product and so you know, that's kind of where the light bulb went off and then uh, believe it or not it, you know that was seven years from that day before veritonic actually started so there's a little bit a little bit of a gap before i actually went, went ahead and did it <laughs> Well, it's, you know, it's quite a jump, you know, you've got somewhat of a stable situation going on and you have this theory, but, you know. Yeah, there's was, there was some other things too that happened, I think, along the way that, that helped there. I think that, you know, the amount of content that has sound that's out there today than, you know, in 2007 or 2005, you know, is, is so much greater. And there's so much more demand for voice and for music and for functional sounds and for just things that, you know, every every video has sound and, and and now you know today you know podcasting and smart speakers and you know airpods right you know like there's just so many other places where where sound is is out there in the world and, and you know in everybody's lives you know that's that's a big opportunity uh, to understand how it's performing or what it's doing and and you know for the people creating that creating all that content so that kind of was happening along the way and it's just like man somebody's got to do this um and you know, when we first started, it was like, well, doesn't somebody do that already? And, and it just it wasn't there, surprisingly. Yeah, well, I, I think I came across you guys a couple of years ago, and it took a while for me to kind of figure out what you guys did. But I was, I was really surprised that you were the only ones doing it. it. It seemed like something that there should be. I don't even, I don't even know if you would call it competition necessarily, but just other companies that are doing it. It seemed very bizarre. And um, I was talking to Patrick Givens uh, a couple of weeks ago, and he said something really profound and I'm stealing it from him, but uh, he said, we're all making sound. It's just, are we being mindful of it or is it just going to be an accident? 
And I think that that's totally true. I think every brand out there, big or small, whether it's a brand of an individual or a huge conglomeration, they're all making sounds, but are they paying attention to what those sounds are? Right. And it's funny, Patrick, um, Patrick and I, um, I interviewed him um, on the stage at Advertising Week London um, in January, <laughs> um, <laughs> even though we're both working in New York. But, you know, that, that's, uh, that's a great line. And I think the it's such a hard thing to measure. And I think like people are doing market research, people are doing testing. Um, and in the grand scheme of things, it, within that broad stroke, there, you know, audio is being tested and, and has always been but not with any, anything specific. It's almost like there was, because it kind of fell under this umbrella of research and, you know, and testing and market research or whatever you want to refer to it as, you know, there, was no, there was no specialized methodology to kind of come in and say, well, you don't measure audio the same way you do an image. Um, and you don't uh, look at somebody's response to sound um, the same way that you, you know, look at their response to you know, a visual or, or other factor. You know, we want the world to get better at measuring audio because it, it's, uh, as Patrick kind of points out there, people become more mindful of it. Um, that title raises all the ships. Like, you know, it, it doesn't it doesn't serve us well when we're the only people doing something because then it's, it questions whether you should do it at all. Um, what you ideally want is, is a lot of people doing it. And then it's not a question of whether you should do it or not. It's a question of who's the best at it. And that's a much better place to be. And we saw that, you know, the internet is a fantastic analog for a lot of the things that seem to be happening right now with audio. Um, when Optimus, that A-B testing company started out, we were the only ones doing A-B testing. And by the time we sold that company and exited and moved on and, and other things, there were 20, 30 companies doing similar things and in the exact same thing. Google launched uh, a version of what we did for free, you know, which is great validation. And I hope, I hope audio, I hope the same thing happens um, with audio because you know, that'll mean that it's, it's gained mainstream uh, visibility and how important it is. Now I have a question. This is just my composer geek in me. Uh, um, <laughs> uh, how did you come up with the name? Because I, I see veritonic and I see tonic, like the root of the chord. Am I correct in that? Correct. Yeah. yeah. And then what's the vera? So that's so that's music school on the back half, which you and I both have in common. <laughs> um, and uh, the the front half of that is the is the all boys prep school that preceded music school, which is where we where we took Latin, and that's veritas, right? So you get the true tone right the, the true keynote of the scales so you're finding truth in the center um and that's that's kind of where it can and, and believe it or not it was about that veritonic.com domain was available for 9.99 <laughs> nobody had it um so uh that was amazing that like you know, I, you know you take that kind of truth and 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 the keynote uh of the scale and put it together and, and that's uh so there it is i love it i think that's great um what would you say for like i i don't know if like companies come to you or if you have to do a bit of convincing, I'm sure it's a little bit of both, but what would you say would be the number one problem Veritonic has with gaining marketers attention or having marketers utilize your services? Um, yeah, and you're right. It is, it is both. Um, but I think the, you know, as far as us, you know, looking for people and people coming to us, I think the, the biggest thing that we see is, is just the inherent human condition of just having an ego. And there's just a lot of people, um, you know, just aren't data driven at their core where they really do subscribe to that and practice that every day. And that's not necessarily an audio specific uh, thing. And there's really two pillars that we, we look to establish or, or look for in, in, a, in a partnership that we know is going to be exciting and, and successful. And that's one, do you, do you agree that what you hear matters, which, you know, on the surface, you wouldn't think somebody would dispute, but we've heard that, believe it or not, there are some people that just, they're just not they're so visually centric that just like what you hear doesn't matter or, or is worth measuring. But assuming you've gotten past there, then it's, it's, are you data driven in the way you make decisions? And no one on the surface is going to say no to that either. But at this stage, I would say 20% of the people that we talk to are actually data driven where they, they want data. They don't see it as something that's threatening. They see it as something that's empowering and that's going to liberate their ability to be creative and do interesting things with audio. And, and they're not, afraid of being wrong. And, and, that, and that's, you know, until what we do becomes so mainstream that you effectively have to be doing it, um, then, you know, we're still going to get those people where you have to be data driven. And that's a barrier that's not, like I said, it's not an audio specific problem. Um, it's really, it's really a, a market research and a, and a data and analytics challenge that, that is tied to the human ego. And so that's, you know, it's hard to, 
we're not going to change the way people are wired. <laughs> so um, that's just something that we have to work to um, continue to make what we do accessible so that, you know, there's a certain amount of education involved so that people see it as something that can increase uh, their ability to be successful. You're going to be able to do, you know, be more creative uh, with this information, not be constricted by it. I find it fascinating because I mean, like I started doing this podcast, like not so long ago, I think in June was when I uh, released my first one. I looked around and I was like, okay, the Sonic Truth is doing this sort of thing. Uh, 20,000 Hertz is sort of doing it. It's kind of like the NPR version of it or something. Um, <laughs> and then and then there's mine. And I, and I, I find it interesting because I think if we're, if we're trying to educate on sound and the importance of it, why don't we have more sound out there? in the education world, like, you know what I mean? Like there right. should be more people that are out there presenting it in, um, in the way that, you know, like podcasting is a huge thing now. This is the way that people like to, um, you know, uh, obtain their content now because they're on the go. This is a great way to get into someone's ear <laughs> and right. explain to them, you know, what this is all about. Cause right now it's, it's, it's not accessible to a lot of people because it's just starting from oblivion. But if you tell a good story, um, like even last night on our drive up north, we were listening to, I think it was your recent one, and you had a, a voiceover artist and he was <laughs> explaining like um, putting like the disclaimers into an audio ad. Can't remember which right. episode you were doing. Yeah, but, no, I remember that. I was embarrassed trying to read the same script as you did. Good. Did. <laughs> <laughs> you did better I was, than I, I could. Like, I got off to a, I got off to a decent start. Then it, well, um, and yeah, I, sorry to interrupt on that. Yeah. Oh no no no, that's okay. But I found it fascinating because uh, the response that that you guys documented that people were more responsive to the ads that had those disclaimers in there than not. That was fascinating to me. So it's like people want truth. They want truth like in their in their ears as these spaces grow like and i was just a podcast movement it's like everyone's like podcast you know advertising revenue is now going to exceed a billion dollars or mm -hmm. whatever and mm -hmm. and th that kind of stuff is not going to go beyond where it is without um people being smarter and back to patrick's quote right, being more mindful about what they're doing you're not going to scale advertising revenue without a whole bunch of data to, uh, to figure out what works and what doesn't otherwise it just becomes a bubble um, in the way that, you know, you know, in 2001, the internet did, did, did a few wobbles before it kind of got its legs under it. You know, there's still the pets.com phase and, and it kind of had to be mm -hmm. broken to, to kind of come back. And I think, um, there needs to be more people like this, you know, like the Sonic Truth, uh, which we do with Advertising Week and, and like what you're doing. And, and I was on an episode of, uh, 20,000 Heads, which was uh, the most well-produced podcast I've ever heard. Oh, it's so good! Like, oh my god, I've never sounded so so good in my life. Not not <laughs> what I was saying. Just the the quality of that podcast, just across the board, was just. Uh, I was embarrassed. I'm like, oh my god, like this is the best thing. I've <laughs> so beautifully produced. Um, you know, and I think like, there, but there needs to be more of that, and I think there will be more of that. I think you know, and that's why you know this conversation that we're having today. Like, you know, I'm grabbing the AirPods and doing it from in, from a street in New York because we're recording podcasts at advertising week and, and you're starting this. And I suspect you'll continue to have, you know, more guests and, and guests that can do a lot of, there's, there's no shortage of people out there who want to talk about it. So the platforms no. just aren't there yet. Mm -hmm. um, and I suspect this passion project of yours could, could become uh, really time consuming uh, in a good way for you. If you keep going. <laughs> it's time consuming now, but <laughs> it's a good time well, consuming. It's, it's the, it's the post-production that kills you. I've, yeah. I've found. Oh, totally. Um, this is one thing that we spend a lot of time measuring at Veritonic, actually, is, is the inherent relationship between audio and time. Sound is measurable. Sound is important. Creating a plan and structure for the sound associated with our marketing is something that we all realistically have to be thinking about. With companies like Veritonic pioneering the way, this is possible. I hope you enjoyed today's episode of Sound and Marketing. Don't forget to follow and subscribe on iTunes, Spotify, Google Play, iHeartRadio, and Stitcher. For a free month of Stitcher Premium, go to stitcher.com backslash premium and enter promo code SOUNDINMARKETING at checkout. To get a hold of Scott, you can email him at scott at veritonic, V-E-R-I-T-O-N-I-C dot com, or visit the Veritonic website. To get a hold of me, you can find me at Dreamer Productions. That's D R E A M R Productions.com, LinkedIn, and Facebook. You can also email me at Gina, J E A N N A, at Dreamer Productions.com. 
I'd be happy to chat about any and all sound in marketing questions, so don't hesitate to reach out. All links will be provided in the show notes for this episode. Let's make this world of sound more intriguing, more unique, and more and more on brand.